What's going on people, how are we doing? Thank you for joining another YouTube video. This is gonna be part two of how to trade smart money concepts with a full-time job. Never really like the word smart money, essentially. Uh, I just feel like it's a kind of a branding thing, I guess. Obviously I'm using it because it gets attention on YouTube, right? Um, but ultimately, it's just a way of trading. Um, it's basically supply and demand concepts. I guess it's not nothing really new. There's a big hype around it at the moment, and a lot of people are like SMC, follow the banks, institution, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I guess some of it's a gimmick in some respects. Of course, we want to follow banks, um, BFIs, institutions, hedge funds, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, you know, we never know if they're sitting there pushing a button, doing this, doing that at that point. But the way we see it, I guess, is that they leave um, some kind of crumbs, if not for us to follow. Um, things that we see over and over again. And basically what we're doing is essentially just following the money, uh, trying to be on the right side of the market. To be honest with you, it all goes back to just follow the trend. Like, like that's literally it. Like if you can read a higher time frame narrative and you can build a story around that and follow a trend, you'll be very, very consistent and profitable if you add in these little methodologies, order block, supply, demand, POIs, AOIs, whatever you want to call them, buy to sell, sell to buys, theory it's all the same thing uh, obviously I've done this channel to try and cut a lot of the noise a lot of the crap um, I still don't know if I can swear on YouTube so I'm trying to be you know PG um, but ultimately just to try and give people out there you know a, a clear concise view on on trading itself what trading is what it means to be a trader and obviously the question I get asked the most is how do you trade with a job and obviously that's it's not easy you know especially if you're dabbling with minute time frames second time frames low time frame confirmation entries, if you're at work, it's very difficult for you to essentially just pop to the loo or if you're up a ladder or if you're in an office or your boss can watch you or you're on a building site or under a car or whatever it is that you do, you can't really get your phone out and have full focus. You might be able to get your phone out and have a little look, but whether you're actually focused and know what's going on, you're probably not. So um, the reason for these videos is to try and give you that this is how you could trade with a job. To be honest with you, this is also how you could trade if you didn't have a job and you were full time. And it's something that I've been looking at for quite a while now, whether I want to adapt a little bit to this kind of style, especially days where I'm busy or I want to do other things. Those of you that know me, know I'm really going to get back into focusing on my health. I may do some bits and bobs for that on here. I'm not, not really sure yet. Um, but I neglected my health quite a lot the last year, obviously trying to you know, really get into the realms of trading and, and understanding and being full time. But what I kind of fell into the trap of is being full time doesn't mean you replace your nine to five with a nine to five and you stare at your desk all day. It's about having the freedom and it's about doing things with your life that when you're at a job, you sit there going, oh, wish I had that time today to go to the gym. I wish I had that time to pick my kid up. I wish I could go and watch my kid's school play. Um, I wish I could take my missus out for lunch or for breakfast, right? All these little things when you're at work and you're moaning about, that's what you should be doing when you transition into trading, right? It shouldn't be sat there all day trying to become a millionaire. It shouldn't be I'm trying to make my 500 pound account into 10,000 pounds in a day. Like, yes, it can be done. Can it be sustained? Probably not. Should you be focusing on that? Definitely not. So what it should be is how can I be consistent and how can it work around my life? Now, obviously last time, if you haven't checked it out, I did a video on how to trade solely the four hour. I think we ended with 41% for the month for September, which not being funny, is a good quarter, even a good year, right? Especially as your capital grows, and that's what you have to remember, longevity, not the here and now, where will I be in five years time, is, is kind of what you should be looking at. Today I'm gonna to do a video kind of pairing the four hour with the 15 minute. They're the only time frames that I use, and, and really that we use at Phantom for, for things like structure. Um, they're also the ones that I like to trade off mainly. I like to keep things simple, remove as much discretion as possible. Uh, so I'm just going to go through that on 15 minute. We're going to do the whole of September. I believe last time I did it uh, was on a call with someone. I believe it's something like 500% for the month. Depending on your targets, there is more. Um, obviously, being realistic. Um, yeah, so without further ado, without any more waffle, I'm going to get into the charts. So I'll see you there. Peace. What's happening, homies? Thank you for tuning in. So for those of you that obviously watched the previous video, part one, um, I highly recommend if you haven't, check that out first. Basically, I went over how to just trade four hour, um, you know, without any anything else, literally the four hour. Obviously, we had a cracky month that month. And if you go back to previous data, the four hour, you can go back for years. It's always the same stuff, right? So 
in today's video, I want to go over, you know, combining that with the M15 and how you can just basically use four hour M15 and pretty much violate things, right? Like obviously never get too cocky and always remain humble. But if you follow this, you'll be really profitable. Um, obviously, you know, check it out, test it, build a plan around it, get your own data on it. But I'm telling you now, this stuff, this is powerful. So obviously, as we previously mentioned, right, um, the, the, one of the main things I want to cover in this as well is everybody's looking for reversals in the market, baby pips, all the, all the things you get brought into in trading. They're always about reversals, right? And they're, they're great when you get, um, you catch a reversal, get this filthy wick rejection, price goes, you feel great, you put on Insta, you swing your schlong about, you know, you think you're the, you're the market. The reality is you're not, you're never going to be, right? If you just followed the trend, which is what we're going to do for this whole month, you'll start to see how much is available. Yes, you can play counter trend, but you need to be aware it's simply a pullback and that's all it is. It's not a, oh, this guy's in the moon, right? It's, I'm playing a pullback. Well, I'm going to be clever, get out of the pullback and then get in with the trend, pro trend and continue to ride the wave. Because essentially, if you want to follow money or banks or whatever you want to call it, that is what they're doing. If they're moving price down and you're trying to push price up with your little 50 lots, 100 lots, I'm telling you now, you're going to have a real hard time and probably get your booty spanked a hell of a lot, right? So what you want to do is learn to follow it, identify the trend, and then boom, game on, okay? So obviously, as we know previously, we spoke about, obviously, we took out this high with a 0.4 ticks, so not a lot, but it did take out this previous range. So what that tells me now is, again, we usually will wait for four-hour EOF to fully change before we start looking um, for shorts that we're going to hold, right? Because at the time... This is like our barrier at first. Um, we want to see this fail. Once this fails and then this fails, we're really starting to see um, the four hour kind of change trend. And then that means that, you know, once these lows start to go here, um, we really are going to be, you know, seeing supply take control. But obviously, I know some people might be like, but from here to here, there's probably a lot of opportunity. And there is. You just need to understand how to identify it, right? So once we take out this structural high, we've taken out a huge amount of liquidity. We want to wait and see how, you know, how can we get in? Now, you do have this little demand here, which obviously initially got whipped through. But if we go to the 15, and I've cut price here already. So obviously, at the point of time, we've got this is our high. We've just swept. You can see this filthy reaction. I think this was NFP. We had that push. And then you'll find with NFP, a lot of the time it reverses. Um, and it goes the opposite way to the push. So you can obviously take trades within this. So if we're basing this solely on the 15 minute, um, what I'm going to do, and this is a thing you need to do in your data, you need to decide whether you're going to um, whether you're going to enter at the open, whether you're going to enter at the fifty percent, or whether you're going to enter at the 025 percent. Okay, um, just because there'll be times where the open will get mitigated and go, there'll be times where it comes into the EQ and goes, and obviously depending on stop sizes, um, you can make your stop smaller, of course, if you play the EQ, but you will miss trades. Now, for the purpose of this video and what I do, I'm going to be using this. Um, which is pretty much, I'll pull this up quickly just so you guys can see, it's pretty much 0 0.25, 0 0.75 and 1. And what I would do is I would play the 0.25 for my entry. It gives you that little bit extra um, from, you know, a little bit of a smaller stop loss, um, but it also ensures you get tagged in. A lot of the time you can play the EQ and with spread you'll get missed and there's no worse feeling than getting missed because you're being cocky trying to get a smaller stop. Um, four pips or 4.4 pips is not big. So we're going to be using this for the purpose of this video. Cool, let's get into it. I'm going to do this bar by bar. Um, like I say, I know what happened in September, but I'm not going to be able to pick out every single perfect POI. I have not rehearsed this. This is just me rolling with it. I'm going to hopefully show some losses in here, but hopefully overall we'll, we'll get some nice trades and you guys can see how, when the market starts to trend, how easy it can be to profit from it. All right, so without any more waffle, let's get into it. So for me to get involved in this realistically short, right, if we're basing this on solely 15 minute, I want to see this logo, okay? I want to see demand fail. I want to see supply take control. Now, of course, at the time, we've had a mitigation of these buy to sells. They failed to break the low. We mitigated this demand, which failed to take out this high. So that means this, this level here is weak. So likely we'll see a run on that, okay? At the moment, that did put in a high. So that's kind of classed as a strong low. Um, so let's see how we develop. Let's see what happens. So let's play this on. Okay, so we've broken this with a wick. Um, whether you want to see body or whether you want to see wick, that's completely down to you. 
Um, what I would say here is, you know, we've taken out this week low, we've taken out this low, obviously paired with a bigger picture to the left, taking out four hour um, external range liquidity, taking out the structural highs, and just overall EU being bearish, paired with the weekly and, and daily, um, I'm thinking, right, okay, we could see shorts come into play here, right? So what I'm thinking is, right, well, this held originally, failed to create, and then this failed, right? This demand held. Why did it hold? Built liquidity, right? So the likelihood is, is you go back to the extreme of that move, this can be the level that you want to see shorts from, okay? Now, obviously, we have confirmed a lower high, um, so I would be happy to play this. Whether you play, whether you cover that wick as well. Sorry, I've written them quite zoomed out. Um, so whether you cover that wick as well, or whether you simply want to just play this buy to sell, um, that's fine. Notice how um, obviously we mitigated this and then dropped off. Um, it's also a flip zone. So let me see what happens here. So we can obviously put a limit on here. So you could literally go like this, um, stop. You can cover that wick if you want. So, I mean, come on, man. Two pips stop on a 15 minute. You're having a laugh at you. Like, that's that's ridiculous. Like, if you're not taking these trades and you're trying to get in on the one minute or seconds here, just cover the whole area. If it's valid, it's going to hold. So get in. If it's not, it goes higher. We lose. Who cares? We move on. Losing is part of the game. Right? So let's play this on. Let's see what happens. Boom. Okay. So now we've confirmed these lows fully going, right? We've broken this. Now, one problem here is, is where a lot of people will start to think that this is now the level they want to short from. Okay, now that likely just becomes inducement for the above mitigation. Now, um, I'm not going to get too much into those things. Um, but again, you know, inducement is simply liquidity before a POI. And this gets used and gets run as liquidity. People will set an order here. It won't come off this. You'll probably get a little reaction. It will run that, mitigate this. People then start to think they're going long and then it will absolutely die. Okay, what you can do, though, is you can play a pullback. Right now, the reason I'm playing this level and I'm not looking anywhere here, yes, this is a flip zone. Those of you that know what they are, but ultimately, what I've found a lot with the 15 minute is you want to follow the last lower highs. And if they don't get mitigated, you want to leave them marked because there's a lot of time where they will come back and price will mitigate them. Okay, so let's see if we get any kind of change of character here to take this long. Okay, so we've taken out this low. So if we take out this high, then we've had a change of character because the market was putting in. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. If that fails and disrupts what it's doing, then that's the change of character. But all we're doing here, if we do get in, is we'd be getting in to pull back to this, not to take out this high. We would simply be pulling back into this and then we would get in short and you can either take full profit here or just ensure this is BE in case this fails and of course it comes higher. Okay, that way you're in both sides of the market. You know, hedging is pretty powerful. Right, so... Let's play this on. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So we've taken out these lows. We've taken out these highs. I would go back to the extreme, which is this sell to buy. And I would be happy to do this. So if we drag this out like that, you can see how this hasn't actually been tapped yet. It's gone very close, but it hasn't actually mitigated it. So those of you that are like, yeah, it has. No, it hasn't. It hasn't fully tapped the line. Um, so I would be happy to play this, but like I say, if, right, and this is, this is important. So what we've got here, we've got 4.2 pips stop. Cool. I'm simply playing this. Let me just move this over to here. Right. And this is where misconceptions come in from a lot of people, because what they would be doing is they'd be getting in this trade and they'd be holding it up to this high and they've got no understanding of just where the market is and what we're doing. Obviously oh, we're starting to see demand levels fail. Right. So why the hell do we want to start? trying to, you know, long it only. We want to get long to get short. And like I say, you don't have to get long here, okay? Because this could just blow through, right? So let's play this on. Uh, cool. So you get tagged in here. See if this one holds or if it takes out. Um, this is like going into New York, going into spread hours. Okay, cool. So now obviously price has come into this guy. Now the beauty of this, right, is this low, failed to take out these highs, okay? So it's a weak low. So at, at minimum, you target that low, right? Now, realistically, you could say I'm targeting this four hour demand. Um, ultimately, if you're very experienced and you have a great understanding, you need to understand that you're so well positioned here if we're about to change trend, you're better off holding this and just hedging yourself against the, um, the short. So if we come into this demand and get a great reaction, take longs, but keep this short full volume. Now, obviously, I always live by pay yourself. 
from here to here is a one to 14. That is not a bad trade at all. That is not a bad month. So you can just say, I'm going to target the week low, right? So if we put this on, I'm going to play this quite quick on here. Um, now, let's say for some reason you didn't get in this, right? And you were saying to yourself, ah, oh, man, I was waiting for, let's say you were waiting for um, a reaction off this instead. Okay, well, now your reaction has started because see this wick takes out this liquidity. So this is your first opportunity to re-enter if you want to. So you could play this here. Obviously, again, you could target this low and your stop would go above that wick. So you've got three pips there. Okay. So you'd get tagged in that, boom, instant reaction. Now this wick takes out this liquidity. So again, you could play this guy here and boom, you could play that and you would cover that high. Now I've got that 3.6 pips. So already, right, within the space of uh, 7th September, the same day, right, we're potentially now getting in three shorts. Okay, we've already took a 5.7% here and we're now getting three shorts, right? You can load up. When you start to see these levels of demand failing and such an aggressive V-shaped reaction from this level, right, along with the higher time frame narrative we've built, in theory, we should be hitting this four hour demand, right, if we're gonna continue bullish EOF. So at minimum, really, these should be your target. Now, what you have to remember is when we take out a low, we're gonna get a pullback. Just like here, we took out a low, we got a pullback. We're gonna take out a low, we're gonna get a pullback. You have to be prepared to sit through those pullbacks and not freak out, right? So I'll get well into waffling. Right, so you get tagged into this, maybe spread pings us here. Um, possibly we get taken out of that. Um, that's fine. So, you know, you get a nice reaction after, but this is where you need to say to yourself, you know what, I'm happy to get back in. I think it's valid. Does it come back to this? All we're doing here is following order flow, right? We're literally following bearish momentum and we're literally saying we are essentially following the money, right? If this is gonna go short, then from a, a bank perspective, they're not gonna let price go above these highs. It's why we're getting mitigation, 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 mitigation. When you start to see this kind of delivery of price action paired with the narrative we've built, you should just be getting in, getting in, getting in. Now I'll be lying to you if I say I get in, get in, get in. I'm still working on that. And I'm, you know, I've set some new goals for myself to truly kind of level up and, and get involved in those kind of trades and make the most out of out of the positions, right? Because if you get in all these trades here in the first sort of couple of days of September, you can literally be done for the month. We've got a one to 19, a one to 11, a one to nine and a one to nine. You know, um, maybe we took a loss here, okay? The, likely we would have took a loss there because of the spread. All right, so we've just been tagged into this position. I know it's getting a little bit messy. Obviously just played the buy to sell. Um, so let's see what happens. You could have again got in here if you wanted to, right? This demand only held to build liquidity. I would imagine now this will get run. Boom, so that gets taken out. Now this demand here is holding. Um, there's nothing really clear concise. You've got these buy to sell wicks. Um, let's, let's play these ones here. Um, because you get sell to buy, comes back, reacts, fails, takes the low out. So we could play here, obviously, you know, you don't have to, but these are all things that you can, you can analyze this stuff before you go to work and you can leave limits. So you could have had a limit sitting on this, gone to work, TP down here, and that's a one to 19 on its own. You could have seen this change of character here before you went to work, right? Boom, you target that, that's a one to five. That's, that's solid, right? So let's see if this takes us out. I even get tagged, that's not very nice. Cool, so now we've hit this um, demand. So you could TP these. Now, like I said to you, personally, I would now look for hedges. I wouldn't wanna get out of these just because they're so well positioned if we're gonna change trend. Um, now looking here, you've got this reaction to this wick. It tries to put in high, it fails. So you could definitely go short off that. So I would get rid of that. Um, and obviously these are levels where you'd just be going on the lower time frame if of course you wanted to, but you can literally play um, just 15 minutes. So this one here, let's see if this tags us or if it just goes without. Okay, so that's gone without us. Um, didn't get tagged in that, it's gonna happen. You can see here, if you played the open, you would have been in, but obviously I said for this video, I will play the 25%. So this is just stuff you've got to test. When we say gather data, this is exactly what we mean. What is better for you? Would you rather just be in the trade with a bigger stop or would you rather have a little bit of a refinement, but you can miss things, okay? So let's clean these things up. So obviously we're in these chart, um, trades here. Let's move that over. So now we've had a reaction to this demand. 
price tried to put in a high, failed again. We're literally just following momentum here, right? But what I would say is we're starting to get lower and lower in this leg. So I will be mindful of how many I would take. This would probably be my last one and I'd want to see a pullback. I'd also want to cover this wick. So we're looking at a 7.5 pip stop now. Um, so let's see, does that one tag us? Is it going about us? Okay, so we get tagged. So in this one, obviously we're quite low in this leg. You could just target, um, you know, realistically, if we're playing that wick, we want to we want to use the, the wick as the level. Um, so does it give us a bit of a smaller stop? Seven pips. Personally, I won't get in a trade unless it gives a one to five risk reward. Um, this gives a two to wipe out this demand. Um, now, doesn't mean you shouldn't take it because of course it could take this out and we could be coming down to the, to the next one. Um, bearing in mind, we're probably in all of these still or, or we've taken more or less 20, 30, let's just say 40, 50. 50, 50 R potentially, 55 R. Sorry, no, we didn't because we took an L here. I'm going to say this one was a loss because of this wick. So 44 R-ish. Um, and it's been 7th of September to the 7th of September. So you're 45% up for a day. I'm not being funny, mate. Why are you still trading? Go and do something else. Um, but obviously, I've put this one on, so we'll see what happens to this one. Uh, again, break-evens, something you need to work out. As you can see, the 15-minute zones do get tested quite a lot. So you may want to say, right, I want to go BE after boss of the M15. Um, you might want to BE partials at like a one to four, one to five. Again, these are all things that you need to kind of dive into. Um, let's see if this holds. Obviously, this hasn't broken anything yet, so it could well get induced. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to stick this on. What we got here, 4.4 pips. Uh, see what happens. Okay, cool. So now we've taken out the first four hour demand, right? So if we go back to the four hour now, we can say to ourselves, well, that kind of gives away what happens, but we can say to ourselves, in theory, we should be coming to this guy, right? Now you can make that a little bit bigger if you want. You could make it this guy because it's quite a small candle, but overall I'd be looking at that. And that that's where I'd look, literally, that's where I'd be looking to really see any kind of um, pullback, if you like. So for now, I would simply be saying to myself, can I just keep getting short, right? Now, remember I said, I like to keep my eyes on the lower highs, the ones that don't get mitigated. Now, this one got tapped at the open. This one got tapped. This one got tapped. This one hasn't, right? Notice how this guy, you've got this nice buy to sell, takes out liquidity. It never had a full mitigation, right? So I'd be interested in what happens here. Um, and obviously, you know, interested in this region here. So we could look to play. This is a nice flip. We could definitely look to play that if we wanted to uh so let's put this on i know this is already tagged here but we'll cover this high but we're aware in our head right that it could induce for this one okay so we're just following mitigations obviously we're in these trades still i'm going to bring all these down just to show you the true potential if you are confident holding to levels um but like i always say pay yourself because it's really important that you do so um Oof, okay, so she's just taken us out. Uh, looks like we've mitigated this doji. Okay, interesting. It happens. And this is where you can't really kick off. We did have some kind of equal highs here, I guess. So, um, you know, it's a valid loss. I'd take that on the chin. We move. You cannot sit there crying your eyes out about that. You've just taken the absolute mick out of the market. Look at this, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades right one wrong oh sorry this one was wrong okay let me put that so i actually can see it's wrong right so we took two losses okay so we've got minus one minus two and then we've got one two three four five six wins which minimum five are each so do two losses matter absolutely not and like i say if you've got the confidence to hold these this is running 30 percent just one trade it's only the 8th of september it's been a day you can't tell me there's no opportunity in the market you just need to understand how to read it Okay, and pair it with higher time frames. So we got taken out of that, but I would still, sorry, I'll leave that on because I want to leave the losses on too. Oh, come on. But I would still be interested in this. One thing I've noticed is we will come back to previous unmitigated lower highs. We kind of had this mitigation to mitigation, real nice order flow, and then here it kind of got disrupted. Now I know this um, sell candle did tap that, but overall I'd still be interested in the EQ could get hit. 
Um, you can get multiple mitigations of a zone. You never just get one. Well, I say you never get one, that's a lie. You can just have one, but you also have to be prepared. You could have more, okay? Just like here, you get this tap, you get this tap, it taps again, then we go, right? It happens over and over again. So just don't write this level off. All I would do is leave this level marked. My now, my interested level would be this. So I would, I would happily follow it, but I'm just, I'm happy that if I get it wrong, I'll go above, right? So you can have a limit sitting here. So let's put a limit on that. So we, we've got it. Um, let's put a limit there. So three and a half pips. And then, well, here, this is a sweep, right? This takes out those highs. So I'd be interested to trade away from the sweep. Just like here, you want to trade away from the sweep. This is essentially called like, um, you know, a trap. If you want to, if you've heard of that liquidity trap, um, you know, basically if price runs aggressively in that direction it's like, and runs out, you do not want to trade into that. You want to trade away from that. That's just what it is, liquidity trap, right? So if we're trading away from this, um, it's the same with all these. Look, liquidity sweep, trade away. Liquidity sweep, trade away. Liquidity sweep, trade away, right? It's, it's the same. Liquidity sweep, trade away. Liquidity sweep, trade away. Liquid, right? So if we're trading away from the trap, then we kind of shouldn't be on the wrong side of the market. You still can be, right? This is not some bulletproof method. Um, right, okay, so we start to push down pretty aggressive. See if we come to this four hour before we reach this guy. So I would happily have a limit here. Mm -hmm. um, I would happily have a limit on this, covering that wick, but I would also be interested in, do we have a, a nice change of character down here? We do, we do take these lows out and we have taken this high out. We're yet to mitigate the refined four hour, but you'll likely find we've more than likely, if I just draw this line like this, we go to the four hour, can't trade in view. Um, we've tapped the top of this um, sell to buy range, right? So you, that's why I say you can refine it like this if you wanted. Um, and if we go back, ooh, we just missed it. Okay, so we've just missed it, right? So this is where you might get in, enticed in to say, you know what, I'm gonna play longs here into shorts. Now, of course, you can, because if we, for some reason, do reverse from here, these trades are going to end up getting taken out, um, depending if you've targeted this as well, right? They might have just missed your TP. This is the demand where it's essentially the swing low. Um, so if this one fails, then we're fully going to hell. But obviously, if this holds, we could, of course, put in a new high. So this is where you could TP a lot of these. So you've got 1 to 36, 1 to 22, 1 to, sorry, that was some last. 1 to 18, 1 to 5.9, 1 to 8.5, a loss. So you could quite comfortably um, still look to get short into this. Um, right, so now it's hit it, I'd be looking for long. See how if you took a long off this, you would have just got smashed, right? It didn't hit the refined zone. Now it's hit the zone. Um, we can see if we get a change of character. So we're looking like, yeah, cool. So let me move this here. We've just taken out this low just taken out this high. So I'd be interested to play this guy short, um, this guy long, sorry, hedging the shorts. Because like I said, this is a very valid four hour level. Um, and we could see bullish order flow continue from here. So if I drag that out there, um, let's drag it out to about here. And then put that on. I'm really conscious, I'm trying not to go over time, but I'm also trying to deliver some value. Um, so you could play that up to there, which is a 9.4. You could play that to here, which is a 7.6. Again, it's completely down to you, but do not overlook how powerful that trade is because that's serious percent, right? I am showing this that there's so much opportunity. I'm not saying you need to be in all these trades, right? Don't overtrade, don't be a nutter. Just get consistent. Can you make five, 10% a month? Cool. Can I make 10, 15% a month? Cool. Go for funding, get funding, build a personal, get a six-figure personal, compounded, doing 10% per week, for instance, I'm sure after 12 months, it's about 1.6 million. Not being funny, there's not many businesses that can do that, right? Remember, trading is a business, so treat it like one. Right. So let's see what we get tagged in first. Either or I would be happy with. If we take the short first, call, it covers me for getting in the long. If the long comes first, call, it covers me in case these, are, these all just get wiped out, okay? So let's see what happens. I'm gonna play this on a little bit because of the old time. So at the moment, I wouldn't, what I wouldn't be doing right now is trying to chase this, okay? I would literally be saying to myself, I want one of these levels to be mitigated. Uh, oh, 
Okay, this is going to get real messy. Uh, let me move this across. So it looks like this isn't going to hit yet. Um, if I put that there, and then it looks like this has just now been hit. Hit. Oh, right, let me get rid of this for a minute. Right, okay, so we're in this short now, getting tagged in. See the power of getting tagged in at the 0.25? It's very accurate. Okay, there's times where it misses you, like it might miss me here. Um, but let's let's have a look. So let's play this on. So obviously remember we're in this, right? So you can decide how you're going to manage this, whether you're TP in this one here, because again, we're yet to get rid of this four-hour zone. There's nothing wrong with TP in that. And then whether you get in this long and you hold it, but remember, we do have this unmitigated supply zone above, which is part of that chain which we've been following. Okay, so if I play this on, right, so now I've been tagged in that again, see the accuracy of that. I know the EQ probably would have tagged you, but just showing, you know, this is a pretty powerful tool. If we get our limit on this guy in case it does come up here. Um, and like I say, I'd be, I'm in long now. So I've taken profits on this. So we've secured 7R on this. And now I'd be targeting this here, which is a 9R. And then I would obviously be happy to get in short. And obviously these have left some equal lows, demand has held for me to build liquidity because we're still following that supply. Um, so let's see which side wins. Obviously you can decide whether you TP, you can decide whether you hold, it's completely down to you. Um, oof. Okay, so this trade here has now come up to here, we've made 9.4%. Now, like I said to you, if you wanted to hold this, um, by all means, you could have held this here you would now be in both. And now it's a case of, well, I'm hedged, right? I am, um, I'm long and I'm short. And potentially you have something left on these, even if it's um, a couple of lots, leave something running. It, it helps train your brain to let trades run because you can see they get to your expectation. Um, so now we've been tagging this. So now like I say, you can even take this. 9% is, is a lot, right? So to give it all back is, is mad, but, we want to stay in this because if we're wrong and now this four hour level holds, this could take out all of this, right? So overall, we want to leave something here. So the best option for me is get this to break even, get in short, and then try and get this to break even as quickly as possible. And then let one side win, knowing that if this four hour goes, four hour order flow is now changing. So this short, you could potentially just hold until we take out the four hour range. Okay, so clear up these drawings. It looks like my kid's drawn all over it. Um, right, so we're in this. Again, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if you'd have stayed in this. Um, what time is this? It's 9.30 in the morning. If you're on like an IC market, it's raw. You may stay in. Um, FTMO, you're probably tagged out. And that's where you could potentially look to get back in again. You could see if it gives you a re-entry. Um, or you could have a set rule. I don't want to put my stock bang on the high. I want to give it a little bit of room. You know, these are all things you could say, I want a four pip stop minimum, for instance. These are all things, when we say gather data, this is what it means. You know, just like this here, you know, here we've got 4.3 bang on the low. It only taps there, sweet. Another time it could come in and go boing and then go, and it might take us out. So these are the things that you need to be kind of in your plan. But what I must say is whatever you decide to do, you have to stick to. So you can't change, you know, um, and go, ah, oh, this one I did four pips, this one I did two pips. Try and keep it fairly generic. For me, when I'm getting on the lower time frame, I don't go below one pip, I don't go above two pips. So if I can't get a two pip stop, I will find a way or I will get in um, at another point. Um, it's just a rule I've put in place. I see it happen a lot when I'm getting on the lower time frames. But we're focused on the 15 minute, stop getting on the tangent. Right, so again now, right, obviously we've created another mitigation because we've got this that reacted to these uh, sell to buy wicks, price come back, mitigated it, tried to put in high, failed. So of course, this could be a potential short, um, looking like it's just going to go without us. But again, I would leave that area marked. Um, no matter how far down price goes, I'm interested in that still. Okay, now yes, there's a bunch of stuff here. You know, this is really nice. Sorry, I've kind of clicked on a bit. This is nice here, we react to this, it fails. You've got these buy the cells there. So that again is a real nice short. So you could get in here and you, I'd really want my stock above that wick, not this wick. Um, so you'd be looking at 6.8. Um, like I say, these ones now in theory, you should just be letting run um, until we go back to the four hour. Um, 
Right, so obviously, again, if we're basing this on a four hour perspective, these lows failed to put in new highs, so they're weak. So you should be targeting these lows at minimum, and then you should be expecting a pullback into this four hour. And that's where that mitigation is that we left, um, you know, where we got tagged out. So I would leave that there because we may well come back to that. And these are the ones where you can literally say, I'm going to leave a limit on that because I like that. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't come back straight away. It's valid. Like it's the last mitigation again. So it's certainly valid. Whether you cover that wick, this is where you need to decide. I mean, I don't personally like these up here, um, but let's roll with, you know what? I'm going to cover that wick. I'm going to give it five, 5.3 pips. Just to be sure, because again, if I'm getting up here, I know the potential of this trade and I know that this trade could really provide. Okay, so I'm not going to you know, cut it short. But now we also need to look at the current picture. This takes out this high. This is a sweep. It's also a flip. So this could be the next mitigation. Um, let's put that there. Oh. And obviously, we're now fully bearish on the four hour and on the 15 minutes. So we're following trend. And this is what I mean about follow the trend. It's powerful. Yes, we've played a pullback, but we were aware it was a pullback. It's counter trend, but it's valid. Here, it's valid. But don't hold it up here. I always say three important things in, in trading. You need risk management. You need an entry criteria. And you need an exit criteria. It's all well and good having this beautiful entry model. But you also need an exit model. How do I get out of the market with my profit? Because nothing in the market is yours until you've actually closed the trade and withdrawn the money. Profit that's floating is not yours. And that's something you have to get your head around. I used to be terrible. I used to watch the numbers go up and be like, oh my God, five, six, seven grand. Oh my God. It ain't yours, mate, until you click close. So if it's not part of your plan to get out, you've got to hold it. If it is part of your plan, i.e. I'm targeting this, then no matter how good the trade looks like it's running, you have to get out. Just like if you got in here and your exit was that low, don't get the ump when it goes down here. You, you targeted that low. Be at peace with it, okay? Rinse and repeat. That's literally it. So we've got this limit on here. This demand in theory shouldn't hold, but it is giving us a pullback. Why? Likely building liquidity. Let's see if we come back or not. Okay, so this is just dying off without us. Fine. So I'm going to keep these two levels here because I am still interested in them. And obviously this is, they're inside the four hour. Um, so we could definitely revisit, uh, but let's just have a look where we are now on this scale. So the next real level is kind of like this whole kind of range. Um, you've got this sell to buy, this big wick that takes out liquidity. This is a level where we may see a pullback into this. Um, so let's see what happens. Let's see if I can play this on a little bit. Okay, so we've now hit this. We've taken out these lows. Um, depending on how aggressive you want to be, those lows trade up below one another, so I wouldn't be getting anything yet. All right, so we've taken out this high. Um, you could certainly look at, well, you've got this extreme. You could look to play longs off it. Again, pullback, not new trade, not new trend, just pullback. It may not come. So let's see. It looks like it's just going to go. Okay. So we've not been tagged in that, right? And that's against trend. So I'd now remove that order purely because I'm not leaving that on. And we've now just been tagged into this. Um, so this obviously could hold, but in my head, I'm still aware we could very much come for this guy. Okay. And that's something you have to remember. It's still valid. Don't get married so it's, up. it's got to work from here, okay? At minimum, this should come and take these lows out. Um, of course, it might not. We do have, you know, we have started taking out some um, bullish structures. Nothing major, I don't think. Uh, okay, that's an 18 pit pullback. So yeah, you know, we've somewhat now, M15 has gone bullish, but it's essentially gone bullish um, for the four hour and the M15 to realign, right? Because if we've got to get back up to here, this, this buy to sell, price may go bullish on a lower time frame to get up there. That's where everyone gets confused because now everyone's looking for M15 longs, but all we've done is mitigate the four hour, the M15 will go back bearish and then we'll continue trending, right? And like I say, these lows are our target in theory because we, we know from previous data, which I explained on the previous video, 
their previous reign should be taken out. Now, of course, anything can happen, it's trading, right? But we're in this, okay? Now, I will mark out, we've got a couple of demand levels. I'm not going to mark all of them out. We're going to see what happens with this trade, whether we get BE, right? So you could now say to yourself, I'm going to go BE because I'm aware there's a level above. Uh, obviously, price has now swept into this um, this sweep, more so this sell to buy range, which, you know, maybe on a 30 minute is, is a whole candle. Yep. So on 30 minute, you can see it's a sell to buy. So you can just use time frames to change that. You could look for a long because you could say it's coming up here. You could just wait for the market to show you what it wants to do. Okay, so there's your long. If you took if you took along here, obviously off of that candle that I said, um, and then if we move this back there, this is the trade that you would be holding, right? Because it's now, if we go back to the four hour, it's the top of this four hour, right? It's so valid to trade away from the sweep and away from the strong high. Remember that this broke all these structures, okay? This is essentially the four hour going bearish properly. So if you're in here, do not start getting out here, 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 or here. This, this is a minimum, this is your target, right? In theory, like I say, I'd rather just hedge myself. So if we now go back to the 15 minute, this is where people now start to get their booties whooped, right? Because what people will do is they'll start to go, right, okay, well, um, we're going long off that because we've broken to the upside. Now, you can take a hedge off it if you want, but in theory, this shouldn't hold for long. It might hold, but not, you know, not to put in new highs. Obviously, last mitigation, we have these buy the sales. There's a random dot. Um, so, you know, this is our next level. We can have a limit sitting. Um, I hope this is making sense to you guys. I hope this is helping. You can just imagine how you can be at work setting these trades and kind of chilling, right? So let's see what we get next. Okay, so see how you just took a loss here. Um, you wouldn't have even got to add, cut straight through it. It's not interested. It just becomes liquidity, right? Same here. Now, we've just swept this low with, by a tick. We might see a pullback. You do have this range, but I see this more as inducement for the higher level. Um, Let's see what we get. Where are we with 15th of September? I've got ages. Okay, so that looks like it's gonna react off that. If it starts to break these lows, then we've probably missed it. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's reacted off of something in here. Um, let's go off time frames and just have a little look. Nothing there, all about one hour. You've got this massive buy candle, which you're not going to trade off. Okay, so, you know, we missed a trade here. Whether you then started to say to yourself, well, you know what? Um, this is the other thing that I tend to do is obviously we've got this, which was a really nice POI. But sometimes with EU, right? Get rid of this. It won't always give, um, a re like, a, it won't always be as, as nice. Sometimes you have to just adapt, right? So what we're seeing here is, well, demand held, failed to put in a new high, got run. Right, so you would expect that. Well, it came to those buy to sell wicks. Okay, fine. So you've missed it. The minute we take out this this low, okay, it's like, well, what took it out? Well, we had demand holding, building liquidity. Demand failed. What caused it? Well, there's the last sweep. Okay, notice how this candle takes out this candle's high. So you could play this as your POI again, knowing you might have to play that one above. That's part of the game, right? So you could get in on that one. I mean, it's probably quite late. Yeah, I mean, it's like spread hours, so you probably aren't getting in it. But let's say you did that. Let's say you just covered those wicks, right? And now you're in this trade. And then again, you're targeting this four hour. But in theory, you're targeting lower, right? Now what we're doing is we're essentially saying to ourselves, okay, well, who is all random dots? Um, we've got a couple of levels we can see trades come from. So let's just play this on, let's see what happens. Right, so price comes into this pretty aggressive. Whether you start TPing some of these, completely down to you but like I say you should really just look for a hedge um let's see if we get any kind of hedge uh yeah oh, I know what they are they're my swing dots that I thought I'd got rid of my bad all right okay so what's going on here so we've just took this low we've just took this high so we've had a little chop inside this remember we're hedge short so we, we can happily take a long and if we lose we lose it doesn't really matter but we could say we're playing a pullback um just make this I'll be honest I would I cover the wicks probably would I know I'd say in the discord you should have covered the wick I'm not going to cover the wick I'm going to I'm going to go with four pips um and I'd be looking at 
supply wise, you've got a couple of levels. You've got this, did this react to anything? So this reacted to those wicks. So, you know, we could see reaction from this and obviously we could see a reaction from that. So let's play this on and see what happens. Right, so we're tagged in, we survived with the smaller stop. Oh no, we didn't. Ah! <laughs> That's where I'd be moaning at everyone going, you should have covered the wick. So again, you know, um, it's safer to cover wicks. Yes, it shouldn't break the supply level you're playing, um, but you know, ultimately sometimes it can, it can test it. Obviously that would hurt. Covering the wick for me looks a little bit big, seven pips, but reality is it's not that big, but it doesn't matter because we are short. Let's see if this actually would have played out. Um, yeah, you would have got, well, we're not there yet, sorry. So again, you and now what you could say is you could have a limit resting on this guy. Um, and you could say, right, I'm going to play this. You could cover that wick again. We're now going seven pips. I said it's not even big. Sorry, it's just because uh, I'm trading smaller time frame stuff. I sometimes think that's large. Oh, is that going to tag us? Right, okay. So being tagged in this, right? So let's say you were sensible alb and not silly alb, and you covered that low, right? Your target to that where you get tagged in is four point two four. Now, for me, that's I'd want a one to five. So what you can do is you can either go, right, well, where would be one to five? Okay, there, I'll put my stop there. It's covering this wick low. In theory, you still want to cover the wick. So you could pull back your entry until it covers the wick, knowing full well that you might get missed. These are all decisions in the, in the moment that you sometimes have to make, okay? And again, that only comes from gathering data. So now we've been tagged in this. I am still aware that there is this up here. So again, let's say you've gone to work. We've got a limit on this. Now, because there's a level above, you could go break even on this fairly fast. You could say once it takes this line, I'm going BE. So let's say we've gone BE on that. I mean, that's a very nice reaction. That's the kind of stuff you want to see when you're at work. Alerts pinging, you know, boom, you've just made uh, a bunch of R again. We've now taken out a four hour zone, there's 8%. What we have to remember is like I say, once we start taking out lows, we will see pullbacks. Um, this level is still valid. And of course, you know, could still get hit as is the one above this, right? Um, this is a little bit messy. I don't really like this. I'm quite a fan of this. This is a flip. This was a flip. Um, real corrective nature. You know, you've got impulse, correction, impulse, likely get correction, impulse. Um, so we can start to see what we could play off now if we just play price on a little bit. Um, I need to get my bearings of where we are on the four hour. Okay, so we've just wiped that out. So of course we could expect pullbacks into this. So we need to be mindful of that. Um, obviously we've got maybe a limit on here. What I would say is if this starts, this is starting to come really low into these levels. Obviously we've got, this is our next real reaction point. Um, so we could see price come into this and then pull back. So you could hold these shorts, you know, just bear in mind we've taken out a large amount of structural liquidity um, and broken lows, we could just get a pullback. So if we can pair this up with a 15 anywhere, um, we will be in business. So if we, oh, it's quite far, right, what have we got? Um, what's that? Just want to see if we react to anything. So we react to these massive sell to buy wicks and that there. So if I can line that up with any kind of POI. Uh, got this, which is nice. And we've got these buy to sell wicks. I know some people might be like, how do you know it's buy to, these buy to sell wicks? Well, again, it's reacted, it's failed, it's broken in lifetime. That would have been buying to sell. You can go to like the 10M. Boom, you see how it refines this? So you could refine it to that candle and say, I'm, I'm very interested in that. Obviously we've got this candle, which is on the 15. I won't go lower than the 10 minute when I'm doing refinement stuff. Obviously you can go low as low as the 1M, sorry. And you can, um, of course, refine it to the one minute inside. Maybe that's a different video, um, but I'm just trying to keep this 15 minute, keeping it really simple, which is what trading should be. So if we just play this on, let's see what happens first. Um, do we hit the POI? Yes, I've got to have a random dot. So again, here we could say a random box. Um, we could say we've taken these lows, we've taken these highs. So you could look for longs um, of that. And we also have these sell to buy wicks. So let's see what we get first. Oh, I haven't put a thing on, my bad, sorry. Uh, here. Now, obviously, again, this is quite a small candle, so you could refine it to the range, but we'll go with this, the sell to buy right there. See if it get a tag or not. 
Uh, computer says no. Okay, and that happens, you know, you've just got to deal with that. Like, it's part of the game. There's no point getting the ump. You can, of course, follow it up if you're if you're there. There's opportunity within these, um, these wicks to get in. You know, this reacts to that, fails to put in a low, takes it out, comes back, boom, you could be long. I'll draw that one for you. So, obviously, we start to react to this supply zone here. It fails to put in a low, boom, comes back in. Precision on that bad boy. Um, stop below there. You can, of course, trade that up into this if you wanted. Um, we're now seeing a reaction here and it hasn't hit our POI, right? So we could go to the four hour and be like, well, what's going on? What, where are we? Now, notice how we're yet to get back into the range, right? Now, remember I said to you on the previous video, if you go over old data, you'll see that the true move genuinely comes when we're back within the range, right? Look at how here we come into the range, we get the true move, okay? Here, we come back into the range, we get the true move, right? Here, we tap the bottom of the range, we get the true move, okay? Happens all over the place, okay? So what I'm saying is, if this hasn't come back into the range yet, we can still hold these longs until we get into the range. So if I mark out where the range would be, there, and then we go back to the 15 minute, we know that in theory, until price comes into here, it shouldn't sell off. So it can give us that bias as, you know what, we shouldn't trade that because that's not a valid level to trade from. We want to be targeting this guy, right? So then we can have our limit on this. Now it might take some time to get there, but we're working with a three pip stop. Let's see what we get. See if the long holds, the long might fail. Remember it's against the trend. We're just playing a chop. Okay, so we've not tapped the bottom of the range, right? So it doesn't mean that this low will hold. It, of course, could fail. We could come in for a second mitigation of the four hour, right? You can trade this. Notice how it just went above this POI. You could still probably trade this. There's no denying that. I'll just get this moved over. I want to be aware where that is. Go away, dots. Um, right, let's play it on. Very rangy, probably some news events coming up. Um, let's have a look. So just move this over. So we're yet to get back into this range. So the true move's likely not going to come. Boom. Now we're back in the range. Look at that. You're telling me that's random. <laughs> it's not random. It's never random. There's a reason behind every move in the market. Okay. Um, you just need to understand how to read it and you need to understand what's going on. All we've done is follow the trend. Look what it is. This is one month. We're not even at the end of the month yet. And, and remember, right, if, you are, if you're confident, we're still in a lot of these. We never got out, right? That one, obviously, we're out of. I think we I can't remember what we targeted below. This one, you'd still be in. This one, we said we'd hold. This one, we said we'd hold. You know, 11%, 19%, 26%. Can't see percent, thirty-five percent. You know these ones were, were still valid to hold. Imagine you held all these; they'd be like ones or hundreds each. But this is what I'm saying: that it goes above five hundred percent for the month. It could be thousand. It all depends on your management and your understanding, and your logic. Until this four hour went, we we couldn't truly say we could hold these down here. Okay, that's more hindsight. That was a reasonable level. Once that failed with this push, right? These trades you hold because they're only going one place, and I'm telling you, they're going down here. So you could literally say, that's TP for that, which is a one to 46, that, which is a one to 34, that, which is a one to 26, that, which is a one to 17, this, which would be a one to 30. Like you can see now how quickly these things can, can really add up. Oh, all these dots, man, I thought I got rid of all this stuff, my bad. Right. So. You can literally see how we're just following it. Why? Because we know that likely the previous range will fail. How? Because we've gathered data on it. Why? The, the trend has changed. We're just following it. We're not catching reversals. If you're a reversal trader, imagine the hard time you'd have had in this whole month. Just follow it. Look at that, mate. That's one candle. Okay. So if we go back to the 15 minute, where is our last mitigation? Well, this is now a strong high, right? It swept liquidity, broke swing structure. So this becomes our next mitigation. Now, this is huge. 
So I'd probably, and this is obviously a news event, so I'd probably refine it to the wick at the top and just say, you know what, if it doesn't tag me, whatever, but I'm not going to do anything else because it's just silly, silly stop size. So it plays on. And like I say, it should come back up there. Until it gets back up there, you just don't, don't get involved. You can look for longs here. You know, we take these lows, take these highs. Maybe you got in off this guy, um, which again, if you did, sweet. Did it tag us? No. So you probably didn't get in there. Um, but, you know, you're playing it up to, to the pullback. And this is what I mean about a pullback, right? If you're in this short and it starts pulling back, don't absolutely wet your pants. It's broken major structure. It's going to pull back. So whether you take partials, it's down to you. Again, it's all down to you. But in theory, if we come back up here and tag in, you're just going to get back in the market again. All right. So you get tagged here. Again, where you target in that low. Why? Because it failed to take out the swing high. Okay, sweet. So you're in that now. And in theory, you can just load up on these positions, right? So demand is holding. Why? Build liquidity. Let's wait for demand to fail. Still holding. Why? Build liquidity. Demand fails. Sweet. So now you could say, right, I think this is the next level. Play it on a little bit. This could be valid for shorts. Obviously, it's quite low in this leg, but let's see what happens. Okay, price comes up higher. And now this is this is going to be one of the, right here. So where are we? We're spread out. Let's just get to London. London, right. So we never mitigated this and we've had this happen in previous, right? What have we done? We've swept, trade away from the sweep, okay? Took the high out, swept. What happens? Mitigate. Demand hold, demand hold, demand hold, demand fail. Why? Because supply is still in control. Okay. So you can, in theory, trade from this. Now, we might have missed this because I would have traded those once that wick broke through, but we could probably just refine it to this wick. Like that. Put that there. Um, Let's cover these wicks just to be sure because I don't like nasty little wicks like that. Um, and I'd rather stay in the trade. See if we get a tag. Right, so that, I know you probably didn't see that. That's the tag. That candle came back in and tagged us. All right, and obviously you could have got away with some more stuff, but I'm not greedy. Oh, sorry. Um, so now we've got this, which is obviously a flip off of that demand. Why did it hold to build liquidity? So price is likely to come back into this. And we are likely to take that out. Let's see if this kit comes back for us or if it takes us out. Cool. So we get tagged in here. And does we, does we hold or do we not hold? Oh, mate. Looks like some dot on my screen. I thought my screen was broke. <coughs> Boom. Okay. So there you go. All right. What happened? We said these lows would go and they're going. What have we done? We've just followed the trend. We've just adapted, okay? Now, obviously, when that happens, you're likely going to get a pullback now. We've just broken very major structure, okay? But as you can see, what happens here? This is a sweep, takes out this liquidity, breaks structure. What do you trade from? The sweep. Like, practice this because it's powerful, man. You don't need to be the one looking for reversals all the time. Just follow the trend. And again, here, we sweep. Sorry, I didn't stop that quick enough. We take up this high, right? So it's a sweep. Demand holds. Why? Likely to build liquidity. We push up. Demand holds again. It fails. So now we've created this. This is a sweep. Can we trade from it? Let's see. Obviously, we're, we're well low in this leg. And this is like the last day of the month. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, but let's just play it on. Remember, we're in all these other trades still. It's just going to go. Yeah, she's gone. Okay, we've gone the four hour. Oh, our target was hit ages ago. My bad. So we'd already hit our target. At that point then, let the market rebalance, right? Let the market redo its thing. And we've hit, we've hit our target. But you can see how from this point here down to here, we just made a hell of a lot of up. You need one of those trades a month to be consistent. So what are you moaning about? There's no opportunity. The problem is you've got no discipline. You've got no patience. You haven't got a plan. You haven't got an edge. You've probably not had the right education. You've not spent the time on yourself and you've come into trading thinking it's a get rich quick scheme and it really isn't. Treat it like a business, put the effort in, just like you would if you went to uni to become a doctor, a pilot, an engineer. Put the effort in that you put in on trying to fit in in society, on social media, 
right? Put the effort in you would put in with the missus or the kids and you'll get somewhere. Get, make it fun, make it a hobby, make it a life. You'll see results. If you don't, you're just going to struggle and, and say it doesn't work. There is silly amounts of R there. I don't even know how much. I put on the video about 500 plus because that's what it was. Um, as I went over September myself, doesn't mean I knew where everything was. We took hits there. We didn't get it right at the time. I missed some trades. I'm not claiming to be the best trader in the world. I know what I'm on about. I do well. I've got consistent and I just want to help other people. That's what Phantom is all about. That's what I'm about. So, you know, um, if you want to know more, obviously, definitely recommend checking out Phantom. Um, if, like I said, I might do a couple of other videos on trade stuff. Um, I want to do other stuff on like mindset and, and more journey stuff as well. Obviously, I'm planning to do one every week. I do need ideas. So please um, feel free to drop some ideas in. I don't know how long this video went on for. I apologize if it's ages, but I hope you watched till the end. If you could like and subscribe, share it with your friends. It would really mean a lot to me. Um, I'd like as many people as possible to see this. Um, I don't make anything from this. Those of you that are like, yeah, yeah, he makes loads of money, monetization. Um, one, I don't have that yet. And two, even when I do, unless you've got millions of followers, you make about 30, 40 P. So it's really not something that I'm buzzing about doing. I just wanted to do YouTube one for myself, keep myself accountable, but also to help a lot of you guys that maybe can't get education in different parts of the world uh, and just give more of a reality on trading. I'm going to leave it there. I love you and leave you. And I'll speak to you in a bit and see you on the next one. Peace and love guys.